No. We on. Yeah. We on. We, we, we back. On. We on the air. Yeah, we on. The return of the Ashy. Yeah, we on. Turn of the Ashy Knuckle Boys. <laughs> yes, yes. Season three. Phil. A long time, man. Yes. Michelle. We have to start a new season for the hiatus we went on. Mark got that new stash. What's up with that new mustache, Mark? Yep. I, I'm I'm trying to be more uh, official. I look like a commentator now. Didn't uh, John Anik have that uh, mustache? You got the Anik mustache? Yes. <laughs> John Anik, Paul Felder. Right. I got to be a commentator now. <laughs> Next week I'll be in a suit so I can get the full Anik on. Already halfway there up here. Well, the there's been a lot of fights. That's all I can say. There's been a lot of fights. A lot of main yeah, events yeah. ending very quickly in the first round, and not due to a finish, but injuries. Yeah. So what's up with that? Let's let's go ahead and jump right into that Aspinall Blades fight and how this happened. Like. What exactly happened to him? Does anyone know what the injury ended up being? I know something with his knee, but I'm not sure what, what exactly it is because I haven't seen anything. Because first watched it, I was like, did he, did Blades like tuck his elbow? Did he crack his like uh, femur? Femur, right? That's what that bone is? Mm, whatever. But did he crack his like leg? Or what? But no, he hit him straight in the ribs. Like, I think it was when his he, hip when area he was landing when he went to go put his foot back down. Something happened. Something happened. I think he landed on it weird then. Yeah. Yeah. When he he threw that kick and he went to step back, his his knee left the chat. Hmm. Probably partially torn already then. I don't think it was a tear. I think it was a break, like a um, bone break. Like it looked like it was oh. close to the patellar tendon or something like that, or it was like uh, in the upper knee area. I mean, upper shin, like lower knee area. Because hmm. he, he laid there for a while and he didn't move. He was kind of like, like obviously, like writhing in pain or whatever, but. When they got the like, when you see a, a sprain, like a ligament tear or a ligament sprain, usually they get to just walk off. And they have damage, but they can walk off with some assistance. They had to yeah, put it, someone holds prop them up. Right, right. Or even if we, when you watch football and you see a guy spraying their shit, like or tear their ACL, even if they out for the year, they still walk off on their own power. But this wasn't like that. Like he had the, he needed help. They had, they put his he was on the canvas for for what seemed like forever, longer than the fight, obviously. And then they put him in like a cast and then kind of like a wheelbarrow or some shit. That's just like a little weird ass chair they put him in, like get him to peel him out of the octagon. Like they got to bring out like a gurney. So it looks it looked pretty significant. It looked like a tear. It looked like more of a break. I agree. It's just it was just weird the way that it did it because like normally when you see a break, you see like some kind of Chris Weidman scenario or like you know hopping or something. I don't know. Like a tear, like you said, it didn't seem like a tear, but it seems like a tear. But I don't know, just because the way it happened, you don't usually break your leg coming down and back. You usually break it on the kick or the block. You know, not coming back. It's usually the tears where you like you go put pressure back on it, then it rips more. It's just a weird sequence. Very man. Um, wish wish t- wish Tom Aspinall a speedy recovery. Cause um, mm-hmm. that was really I was really interested in that fight. Um, they both like <clears throat> he's so athletic and 
he's a huge heavyweight too, and he can be contender for the title. So I was curious to see how he would perform against um, Curtis Blades, who outside of like Francis and Derek Lewis knockouts, he's been kind of like steamrolling everybody else in the division and been, you know, right on that cusp of being a title contender itself. He's one of the guys we talked about in our very first episode, I believe. One of the yeah. younger heavyweights on the rise. Yep. Yeah, we've always talked about him as a good prospect that's definitely on the rise, and we've all had high hopes for him. So Frank Mir Jr. Yeah, I hope he will be a con- uh, uh, recovery. Was he in that same class as uh, Cyril Gunn? Or... He, oh. uh, he was one of those guys on the come up with him. Yeah. About a year and a half ago. He took his time, though. Where Cyril was, like, trying to push the envelope and push the Naganu story, Aspinall was fine with just kind of slowly building up his opponents and getting to where he's at. He was open about that. Do we? Do you feel the winner of – I mean, let's assume Aspinall takes a year off. It takes only a year to recover. Um, I mean, obviously, hope, we're hoping for sooner, but that, that looked pretty serious. So I think a year would be generous at this point. Um, but that's just, we, we don't know that much information. I don't, at least I don't. I didn't get anything. Did you guys get any other news? No, I just looked it up. I haven't been announced what the injury is yet. It's just knee injury. Okay, so let's assume he has like. Um, an injury that keeps him out for, let's say, a year. Where do you move forward for Blades? Like, do you give Blades the winner of Tui Vasa gone, or do you give Blades the loser of Tui Vasa gone, um, and somehow make that Aspinall fight a rematch with Blades? Because this is all obviously assumption, right? Because we don't know what they're going to do with um, Jones and Stipe. Francis is running through swimming pools with Uzman. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, he's not, he's not, he has nothing on the books. And, I mean, for the foreseeable future, we don't even know. So, we got Lewis and Gon, that's, not that Lewis, but to Ivasa and Cyril Gon, that's the only obvious book fight of the of top ranking contenders so what do we do with um so what do you think happens going forward with um curtis blaze here who does he get matched up with i'd say the winner yeah i mean it's really hard to say in that situation because you know that they're trying to make stipe versus jones so they're trying to make that. So that kind of locks those two up. And I think Stipe is really only going to accept a John Jones fight or whoever has the title. I don't think he'll accept anything else. I don't think that John Jones will accept a Curtis Blades fight because he's only going to accept Stipe or the, whoever has the title either. And so you really only have the winner of the title match because Curtis Blades can't go backwards at this point. No, 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 no. He definitely can't go backwards. He can't go backwards. He can't really go forward. He's kind of just stuck. Actually, and you, the, the unfortunate thing is, if even if they do do the Stipe versus Jones fight, you know the winner of that's going to get the winner of the title. Oh, of course. So, he's just kind of fucked. <laughs> he could even get the loser of the Tuivasa and Gon fight, depending on the the outcome of the the loss. Like if it's like a a boring fight, actually I don't know, because it it could be boring if uh, Serial just stays out of range from Ty the whole time mm-hmm. and just points him out, or he could finish him. I know he he got the capability to finish people. He just been playing it safe to get to the title, so we'll see. I, I, I like, think that's I like Blades over Gondo. 
I've always liked Blades over a lot of people. He he only had one weakness, and that's in transition, where Derek Luce likes to uppercut, and so does Nagano. That's why I think Ty got a chance at him, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, when if he could ever sure that up, he's probably one of he is one of the best in that division. Period. So he's such a um, um for blades. You nailed it on the head. Pretty much only got starched by like huge power heads. Um, he got like, knocked out by Francis twice, and then knocked out by Derek Lewis. But he usually doesn't he usually doesn't struggle with the technical guys. Mm-hmm. He usually struggles with the power heads, and unfortunately for him, he got probably the best power head of all time as a champion. And then Gano, he's like max power, and then Derek Lewis is floating around the top five as the second crazy um, freak of nature type power guy. Um, but all the technical guys that are in there, like Gon and you know um, Jones, allegedly, and Stipe, I don't think he would struggle too much with those guys. Who knows? Um, it, it, I had to see it to you know really make a, a real assessment. But he, he hasn't shown the track record to struggle against guys like that. Uh, when it comes to Gon versus Tuivasa, I really think. Um, Don has a lot to prove after that st- that that performance he put on with Nganu. And we haven't heard much from him. So he's probably in the lab right now, like, you know, getting right. And I've always kind of thought that maybe he did rush a little bit too fast and to 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 get up there. He might not be ready for some of those those like top guys, but he did look good against Eric Lewis, even though, you know, he just kind of sh- pushed the shutout. And you know, I would stay on the outside, stayed safe. Same thing with Rosenstrike, where he just you know made it like a he turned it into a sparring match. You kind of see that more and more with the technical guys. Um, what we kind of witnessed that in um, his last card with um, Chris Curtis and Jack Hermanson, where Jack was just content at staying on the outside, on multi-level kicks. And not engaging at all. Like he made it a point to never engage. Like it was kind of funny to watch. Like, you know what I mean? He was like playing tag, bro. <laughs> like he would hit him, hit him, and then literally run around the ring. Very it was kind of yeah. It was kind of funny, <laughs> like to watch. Um But I mean, it's it's I mean, obviously if you're trying to get a win, that's the strategy, but then um if you can't do that, then what? That's what we saw with Francis and um, Gon. Francis was like having none of that shit. He was having no part of playing this outside kickboxing game. And he turned into NCAA and Ganu, like All American and Ganu. <laughs> and uh, he's got a tattoo now. <laughs> and that was Reason one. Real D one and Ganu was that was interesting to watch. Like him just repeatedly take, um, <laughs> repeatedly take up. <laughs> Take Don down, but I think Don has a lot to prove. And really, going into this fight with Tui Vasa, we're gonna get. I think we're gonna get to see a, a more dangerous version of Don. We know one thing about Ty is he can shut the lights out. Um, if you get into a firefight with him, but one thing he, we also know about Tui Vasa is he gets hit a lot in every fight. Every fight he's in, he survives a storm. And then knocks the guy out in a firefight. Did it to Derek Lewis. Did it to um, a bunch of others on his rise up to this fight. So it's gonna be interesting to see because Don does have a lot of power, and he can, you know, he's technically a really good striker. So if he's able to piece up Ty, which I this is kind of how I think it's gonna go. I think he's gonna end up TKO and tied to Ibasa accumulation. He only hit him with a lot of shots and then eventually hurt him and put him away. But I think we're going to see a more more like dangerous version of Gon. I don't think he's going to play it safe. 
That's like, really what it all depends on. Is he going to play it safe or not? Because, like, Tai Tuivasa won't let you just sit back the way that Gon likes to fight. He's going to be right in your face no matter what. And is Gon really that good at striking on his back foot power-wise? We'll see. I, I agree with you, though. I think I do. I, Ty is I, Ty is really good at um, closing the distance and pressuring. So, something's got to give. I still like Blades over Gone, though. I like Blades over Gone. Yeah. I was really, you know what? And to go back to that that brief Aspinall Blades fight, Blades tagged Aspinall like on in a very opening sequence, caught him, and Aspinall beat it. That first shot, I don't know if it was just um a fact of like maybe gone, maybe um gone, maybe um. Curtis didn't throw a lot. He just, he just touched him and then throw like a lot of power, a power into that shot. Or if just Aspinall has a really good chin, it could be a combination of both. Um, but he caught him with a nice shot and he kind of walked through it. I was really interested to see how that fight would have played out. So I think Curtis is definitely um, much improved, and I I like him too. I like him in a matchup against Gon. I really. To be fair, I, I like him against most guys that's not Francis. I think he I think he matches up well against Steve A. I think he matches up well against um John. I think he matches up well against um because he's so he's such a big heavyweight and then he's uh, when it comes to just the wrestling category, obviously it's mixed martial arts and it's not it's more than just wrestling, but not that many guys that you know, can handle him trying to take them down. Agreed. I agree. Uh, Curtis Blades has good hands, not great, but good hands and great wrestling. Like I said, the only flaw in his game that I ever see is just his transitions. Like, he really sucks at transitioning from striking to the takedown. He kind of telegraphs it a little too much, in my opinion. But at the same time, there's not enough heavyweights that have a good enough wrestling pedigree to stop it anyways. And unless they catch him coming in, that's the problem. And that's where I would see Stipe would have a advantage. But I think at this point, Stipe sat out too long and he's probably not going to be able to handle that as well. There's a rumor about him uh, putting on muscle. That's why he's been chilling. I mean... He could be. I haven't really seen much from him at all, to be honest. He's been real quiet. Yep, that's what they say. The rumors he's uh, about a solid 250 now. Instead of, what was he, like 230, 240? Yeah, he was like 230, 240. Last time he put on muscle, he hit like 245. He was like normal, I guess. Yeah. But now they say he's like 250 solid. So do you think that's an overcorrection, though? Because one of the biggest things they were talking about with the last fight with Nganu is he slimmed down. He slimmed down because he wanted more, uh, what's it called, speed and to like kind of be more elusive. Do you think it's an overcorrection because he got knocked out again? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think... Um... He's just trying to compete with these big boys in the division. Like, everybody, you look at the top of the division, Cyril Gan, Francis Ngannou, Curtis Blades, Tom Aspinall, they're all like 6'5", 6'4", 6'5", 260. Mm -hmm. All big boys. And then if you, even if you, if you add John to that mix, who took two years off the bulk up, he's 6'4", 6'5", 250, 260. I mean, so you yeah. got everybody in the divisions, just they're just giants, man. So it's it's back to the Lesnar era. Everyone bulk up to compete with the champ. Yep. Back to the Lesnar era. Back that's if all you see is Lesnar, Shane Carwins, all these <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
these uh Jack Diesel he- uh, heavyweights, like and, um <laughs> even people remember Marine, Marine Frank Mir because Frank Mir put on some muscle too. Oh, he bulked up too, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was always a big guy, but he put on some size after he got um manhandled by Brock. And Shane. Oh, yeah, Shane Shane hit him with a thousand uppercuts. That was nasty. I don't know how Shane lost that fight. Didn't. <laughs> no, the Brock one. <laughs> oh, the Brock. He ran out Brock. of gas. I don't know how Shane lost that fight. I don't know how, how Brock Lesnar survived. Let me let me rephrase that. I don't know how Brock Lesnar survived long enough to win that fight. Prices of gas were cheaper back then. <laughs> that boy ran out of gas. That's what happened. Shane was like, I, I threw all all this the whole thing at you. I found everything under the octagon and hit you with it. <laughs> yeah, the How Mark are you wasn't good enough. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Boy was done. Yeah, no, uh, ain't nothing left to give. Yeah. Well, yeah. Speaking about the London card, we had the Wonder Twins do their thing again, and. I'm not sure where Molly's going, but where you guys think good old Patty's going? Top 15? He going up, up, up? up, up He's not up. ranked right now, right? Not yet. Okay. I mean, that top 15 is pretty solid. Yeah, that top 15 is pretty solid. I'm so. not sure who uh, Demir... Is Magulov is, I hope I said that right. It it right. Was, that was really that was real good. That was real close. It sounded right. I'm not sure who he is, but I imagine if there was an actual champion, Patty would be getting placed uh, at 15 or something. You know, it's really hard because right when you hit 13, you're already at like Dan Hooker. <laughs> like, <laughs> so that that climb is steep. I'm not saying that Patty probably couldn't handle it because he's he's showing more and more that he can he can come up, but yeah, I don't know who. Do I know Jalen Turner? That sounds you do. familiar. Yeah, he got like yeah, a whole heart. Oh yeah, definitely him. Yeah, he's tall, tall skinny cat. Yeah, yeah, and he ain't an easy he ain't an easy out either. He just had a finish, I believe. Larky. Yeah, he choked out a yeah, riddle. Izzy and them. Brad Riddle. Went back-to-back, Went back-to-back finishes, back-to-back. right? Yeah. Three in a row. I say he him, though. I say he fights Dan Hooker or uh, Jalen. Five in a row. Yo, he got five finishes in a row. All of these too. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's a steep climb real quick. <laughs> He's like, Where's he at on his contract talks? Is he going to pull Sean O'Malley and be ready to make them big bucks and go up to the rankings? I think he's already making the big bucks because he, he's – um every time they fight in London, obviously I think he's getting a little piece of that. Um, I don't know if it's – Official, but he don't seem to be having like any gripes about money. And also, Champagne Poppy, aka the you know, Drake, a huge bet on both um Molly and me, Molly and um Patty, and he won. I think he won like three mil. He, um, gave them both Rolexes or something like that as a pro as a bonus. How about this? How about we uh we have a pay per view in Ireland and put him up against McGregor as a comeback? <laughs> I don't think he's coming uh, to 155 though. <laughs> you see him McGregor lately? Yeah, I don't see him making 155. Yeah, that guy's huge right now. McGregor's <laughs> serious about Usman. For real, wants that fight. That is a. Terrible idea on his part, but 
Go for it. I mean, what's what is he? He has he has like absolutely nothing to lose. He loses nothing again if he gets if he goes in there. If he takes the, the title fight against Usman at one seventy, Usman steamrolls him. What happened? What, what does he lose? Everybody expects him to lose to Usman. You and know he, what I expect out of that fight? I expect a run back of DC versus Dan Henderson. Like Ooh. I just see fucking Usman ragdolling him everywhere. Just suplex, suplex, suplex. <laughs> let's see. Let's let's play a little game. What if? What if Honor gets that left hand off? Ags Usman wobbles him and is able to like put him away somehow. And the the Irish are back. If that ever happens, and it's not, I mean, obviously you're going to have the fluke situation that everyone's going to scream out, obviously, but I don't know. that. I don't think the Irish would be back because you don't have anyone else other than Connor back in the Irish right now. That's all you need, though. Connor's all you need. <laughs> but Connor, it's a one-man army. Coming from a guy that works with a lot of Irish, he doesn't even have the Irish behind him anymore. He has Americans behind him. He doesn't have Irish people behind him. He's not very loved in Ireland as much anymore. <laughs> I don't see him defending that title, even if he did win it. When does he de ever defend a title? Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Like He's said, never once defended a title. Even if he d did, I, I don't see, you know, maybe Gilbert Burns. And that's a hard maybe. You, you think he saying? can take Gilbert Burns? If he can land one. That That's a, like I said, a hard maybe. The reason why Usman's so hard to believe that is Usman's still young. And, you know, the shots he took from Kobe, the shots he took from Gilbert, you know, like, it's just hard to believe that Usman would just, I don't think that left hand would be enough. Like, I don't know what jacked up Connor's going to be like, but I feel like he's always picked on the smaller crowd. And that's why 155 is harder for him, because that's, that's his actual weight class. I agree. I mean, I, I don't. I don't think that. All I'm saying in that fight, and this is just hypothetical, right? I'm just saying there's a non-zero chance, non-zero chance that Connor can land a shot on um, Usman because Usman can be hit. I mean, we've seen it. He's hitable, mm -hmm. but and especially coming from a counter striker. That's um as skilled as McGregor is. Does McGregor have enough pop at one seventy to do any real damage? Because I mean that legendary left hand, like you said, disappeared higher the weight he higher the weight class he went into. Because at forty five it was putting people away. Fifty five not so much. I mean he did get Eddie Alvarez out of there, but that and wasn't one pop either. That was. An accumulation, a lot of a lot of it, but and quick, but yeah. The the only person that he really like put away, put away real quick with that left hand pop was, um, Cerrone, and that was at one seventy. And that started with the shoulder check, the little shoulder thing. Remember? No. Yeah. Wasn't really. And Cerrone that. legitimately admitted he quit in that fight. I don't see. The, I don't see any quit in Usman. Yeah. Um, no. I, would, I mean, uh, let's be real. Connor, while I said he has a non-zero chance, still less than one percent to me. He can do anything, Usman at all. But um, this point in his career, I mean, he's going. It, it's a big title fight. More, a lot of money. Which I mean. People say like, um, well, he's not in it for the money no more, or his, his heart's not in it because he's already made so much money. 
is never enough. That's an insatiable um, desire. You're not going to ever go like, oh, I have enough money. You're um, prize fighter or anybody for that matter. I'm like, even the guys who have all the money are still trying to get more. So I, I don't see that as a factor. I, that's still, I still think he wants it too. I know a lot of people don't believe that. They think that like, oh man, he's just like, you know, a social media typer now, like he's a, a got the Twitter fingers, but I, I think he still wants to compete and he's still young enough to be able to. So I think, I don't, I don't think this is the last we see of McGregor, even if he loses again. I think we'll see him back. I mean, I I don't know if he loses again. I don't I don't know. Depends on where he has the option of jumping all around. To be honest, but I don't understand why he doesn't want the actual fights that are going to make him the most money, though. Like, I understand that it's a title fight for Usman, but the Masvidal fight is going to be just as big. He could have took the Nate fight, and that would have been just as big. He could do Ferguson or uh, Gaethje. Those would be gigantic, too. Or Michael Chandler, even. Those are all more winnable fights for him that would be just as big pay-per-view-wise and make him the big bucks. Okay, Nate's a coin flip and a grueling, tough fight. Well, Nate's about to die anyway, so. We'll get to that in a second. Nate's, Nate is a tough fight for Connor matchup-wise because he know he, he can't just finish him in the first round. Not happening. Yeah. But it's going to be a grueling, tough fight that he could lose. Uh, Tony Ferguson, that's another fight where he can get like a lot of cuts and damage. Can also spark Tony, so that's probably the only one that, at this point in their careers, is advantage Connor. That the the the, the, the allure of it's gone because it's like a diminished Tony, kind of like um how Kobe fought Tyron Woodley at the end of Tyron Woodley's like run when he was on the like the downward slope of his career, He'd already gotten smashed like four or five times in a row, and then he fought Kobe. It'd be the same thing like it's like a, a um a damaged goods deal or no one's really into it except um kobe fans or connor fans like the average person knows that like okay this guy's on the tony's on the downside of his career at this point so that but i do think that fight would be advantage connor uh versus gaichi a dangerous fight with no upside <laughs> Like, yeah. he has, like no ups, there's no nothing good for Connor really. Like even if he wins, I mean it's just it's just a win. Not like he doesn't get any uh, jewelry for that win, even though he's fighting a championship caliber guy. And then Michael Chandler's the exact same thing. Like it's a dangerous fight with no upside. The That's upside, I mean, I would say the only upside in it is that you legitimately solidify yourself as an actual contender for a title again versus. Where he's sitting right now is his best win in the last couple of years was Cowboy. I mean, I understand the two of those were Poirier and then the other one was Habib, but his career is not exactly skyrocketing right now other than his namesake. Here's why I like, um, here's why I like the other options. Because the other options are, are, are the champions, right? Like, mm-hmm. Charles Oliveira and Maru Usman. That's why um, they make more sense to him and to, like, the whole sport itself. They give, he, get, he can win the title. They're, they're both, like, really, really dangerous fights for him. But if he would happen to beat any one of them, he gets the strap. The other ones, he just gets, like, I mean, he can get murked and then get nothing. He can win and then get nothing because he's already already in that title picture by his name. He's already, like, he can obviously skip the line against anybody because of his name. He yeah. knows that. The division knows it. Company knows it. The fans know it. 
And the champs are willing to do it because they want that payday too. Red panty night. So mm -hmm. this is what it is at this point with him. We we know, like we get it. It's he's he's got he's gonna get that preferential treatment. So um yeah. for him, it's all about like which one has the most upside. That's that's what that's all I see it as now. Like he he had the upside with um matchup like against Oliveira. Mm, I mean Oliveira's hittable and then we've seen if you if you knock Oliveira down in the first round you're gonna get choked out. <laughs> Fair. That's that's basically Connor in a nutshell. Like he has that ability to um do a lot of damage early. Then he's he sort of fades late. Moving on from Connor, um, we can we can talk more about this last card because there was some good, there was a lot of good fights on that card. Lots of them. And we mentioned one earlier. Um, oh, well, actually, no. What? Forget that card. What about? I mean, we can talk a little bit about like the uh, matchup with Nate and Chamayev. You give Nate. Non-zero chance. I don't ever give Nate a non-zero chance. <laughs> well, because like wait, wait, all that means is like it's not he's not drawing dead. He has so, a, a chance. I'm not a good one. I always give Nate a chance. Okay, okay. Like almost every Nate fight, especially in the last five years, has been he shouldn't win this fight, but he might. Like Yep. That's been his career for a long time now. <laughs> but I always love watching him. I think this will be... Even if he gets slaughtered for five rounds, it'll be one of those fights that you just have to watch to see if he pulls something off. Like, you have to stay on your toes the whole time. But I also do think that this is punishment for him constantly <laughs> crying that he wants out of his contract. They're like, you want out of your contract? Here's the fight to get you out of your contract. Hey, but to be fair, he did call for Hamza. And I think he doesn't really care if he wins or loses this fight. I think he will try to be in there. But the end game is to get this fight off and then Go somewhere else. Fight Start his ball. boxing career. Go to Bellator. Do whatever he wants. He's going to fight Jake Paul. Jake Paul. Or the other brother. No, okay. Logan's tied up now. Ooh. He's a wrestler now, man. He's in oh, WWE. Yeah. He's making the, the fun money. What's making all money? the money. Spending six point five million on a Pokemon card. Yeah, I just don't so see uh, Diaz winning, bro. I really don't. Let me ask you this, Mo. What? How could he win, if possible? How? We know he could survive a beating. He could win the same way he beat Leon Edwards. <laughs> Guess not at all. And Gilbert Burns. I think if he would have had like a fourth or fifth round, might have been able to beat Chemayev. So, I mean, that's a terrible strategy to take a beating for five rounds and then hope to catch a slick submission or something or maybe a nice two-piece with a point, then take the back and go for a choke. But I, that's that's the only way I see winning. But I, he might get finished, honestly. I hate to say it. I mean, to be fair, we all know how this is actually going to end. It's going to go in there. Nate Diaz is going to take some heavy shots in the first and the second round. Going to open up a giant gash on his forehead. And then the doctor's going to stop it. That, that's fair. His whole face is scar tissue. <laughs> like, yeah, that's probably that's fair. Man. And then the next thing you're going to see... Is Nick Diaz is going to talk talk some smack about Shemaev, and then all of a sudden they're going to start talking about making that fight at welterweight. Oh, 
his older brother. Oh my god. Wouldn't that fight be at uh eighty five? I mean, I guess they could. It's like, well, we know that well, first of all, this fight's gonna that fight's gonna be at seventy, right? Mm-hmm. The the Nate Nate the Nate and Hamza fight's gonna be at welterweight. And Nick looked bad at the fight with against Robbie at one seventy. Nick did not look good. They ended up making it at 180, I believe. That's what I was saying. You feel me? Like, so, like, that's that. I would assume that that fight would be at 185. Yeah. He didn't, man. He didn't look too good. Um, Here's my only route for Nate. Because, I mean, obviously, Shamaya's going to be a huge favorite. I believe he opened minus 1,100. Shamaya did. And that for the fight's first fight got announced. I think it was so, that, I mean, and uh, Diaz was plus seven fifty. Right. I think um, it's it's like pretty much a uh, everyone expects Nate to get smashed. Um, but if, if if I make a case for Nate, only case I can make bye bye Mark. Be Mark. He's back. Mm-hmm. Man. You disappeared on my screen for a sec. Um, oh my bad. The only the only way I see Nate winning this is if he can survive an early storm and then get and then like kind of drag Shamayev into deep water, continuously pressure him and keep him going backwards. I don't know how he's gonna do that. That's the path. And maybe um because Shamayev at this point has been f- falling in love with his top game and striking. He hasn't been doing a ton of wrestling. He didn't do much against Gilbert Burns. He was content with making it a kickboxing fight. Um, but he faded late in that Burns fight. So this is obviously going to be a five-rounder. And if Nate can get this fight into the deep, you know, into the championship rounds, the fourth and fifth round, if he can survive that long, and Hamza fades again, then we can maybe see Nate, you know, pour it on and can get maybe a TKO. That's my only real path outside of a submission, maybe. Like maybe he can, um, you know, catch him in transition doing some of the wrestling scrambles and then lock up a submission because Nate does have excellent jujitsu. Mm-hmm. But that's my path. I think uh, it would be – an endurance battle, and then Nate just happens to have more in the tank at the end. But I do agree with you that this is it's going to be a bloody mess, probably from first round on. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of like stoppage due to cuts, or even if Shamayo just straight up KOs him. So if I give if I give Nate any chance to win this, it would be. Him just outlasting Hamza and being able to just put him away once he drags him into deep water. That's me giving. So, for the longest time, that was my biggest question on Shemaev was, does he have the endurance to last a five rounder? And in all honesty, the only reason why I don't think Nate has the same chance that he normally has with that strategy. Shamayev did fade against Gilbert Burns, but a lot of that fading came from heavy hits that Burns hit him with. Like, Burns rocked him a couple of times. And I think if he didn't get hurt like that, he might have had the endurance to keep going, in all honesty. And you know that Nate, unless he just finds some clean shot, he's not a power hitter, so he's not going to make Shamayev fade like that. With those punches, agreed. Um, I don't think Nate. Listen, Nate can't finish a bowl of nachos, bro. Period. Um, I don't think he has the power to really put anybody away with one shot. That's mm-hmm. never been his thing. Like he's he's yeah. always you know accumulation. And to be real, maybe that's not. Maybe Gilbert kind of um lost the fight because of that. I mean. When you have that kind of output and you're not knocking a guy out, it takes some of your gas tank too. So the fact that Nate doesn't go, you know, 
full blast on every shot trying to get you out of there, he can still hit you with 60%, 40%, 50% of his power the whole fight. And if you're declining, if a guy's like, there were moments in the fight where Hamzat was clearly like, that fourth round against Gilbert, Hamzat looked like he was, his feet were stuck in the mud. And if you're doing that against Nate, he's not going to let you off the hook. He's going to keep pressuring you forward, keep hitting you with a lot of shots, talking shit, slapping you, and taking more of you. He doesn't need a chance to recover and get your, your energy back. Which Gilbert did let Shamaya off the hook a lot because he was it, it was breaks in between him throwing power shots. And that's how guys yeah. like oh you you notice guys like um those guys who are who have that um cardio kingpin style like Kobe, like Nate, all those guys like that. They're not letting you off the hook. And they're in your face the whole time. You're not gonna get a chance to breathe. So that's what I mean by um Dragging him into deep water. I think if he did get him to a point where he was kind of like stuck in the mud again, he can, you know, keep it keep it going forward and keep pressuring him and make him have to uh, deal with whatever it is that he's hitting him with. Even though Nate doesn't hit necessarily like hard, he can still stun you. I I mean, obviously he did it to Leon in the fifth, and I mean, if he can constantly pressure him and keep actually landing shots, who knows? Who knows what can happen. But Hamza did prove to have um to be really tough because we saw him get hit with some murderous shots. Like some shots that Gil would usually put guys away with. Hamza was able to deal with it even though he was worse for wear. You guys want to talk about that bare knuckle? Yes. I have not seen any of it, but I heard it was epic. Hey, man. If you're a fight fan and you want to see some fights with not a lot of technique, but it's all action and there's pain and blood, check out some bare knuckle. What what are they called? Bare knuckle fighting championships. Check them out. The BKFC? Yes. Not to be confused with Burger King KFC. It's bare knuckle fighting championships. I don't even know the name of these dudes, but they were they were banging. That's all I gotta say. I was pleasantly surprised. I, I that was that was my first time watching too. I've seen like the highlights and I've seen um some of the stuff on like promo videos. I never watched the whole card top to bottom until this weekend and I like what I saw. I'm, I'm a fan. They they made a fan of me surely. I, I think that um I mean look that's one one sport where you know a, a lot of guys when they watch UFC or they watch MMA they get a little bit like bogged down when it when there's a lull in action because of grappling. Not with this when you watch and when you watch boxing, they get a little bit um, get a little bored by the strategy of boxing because, like, obviously, it's, it's a the sweet science. There's some um, there's a lot of more, there's a lot more going on in just a barroom brawl. But I think BK, what Bare Knuckles doing is kind of combining the best elements of both the stand up because you got the dirty boxing from MMA. You can hold and hit. You can um, hit and you can do like some stuff that you can't really get away with in boxing. You can get away with it in the MMA, bare knuckle. And then you got the elements of boxing where it's just pure stand up. There's no kicks. There's no um, no grappling at all. Just a straight up like a, like a street fight almost with gentleman rules. Those fights were exciting. Like every single fight. Like there was. Even the fights that were not up to par with the ones that were super exciting were still good because they were over pretty quickly. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm they, I gotta I, there's a, I'm a fan. I, I'm I'm gonna watch um, going forward. So I'm I think it's I think it's good. I like it. Uh, the next card, the main events, uh, MVP versus Mike Perry. Mm-hmm. And it starts. It's on the same day, in fact, as the. 
the Usman Leon fight. Same day. But it comes Ooh. on at 2 p.m., the main card. Boys, get your livers ready because we got a long day ahead of us. Yep. What, what day is that? Because I might need to be off for that. I'm definitely yeah, off know, look, for this one. Need to be off the next day. <laughs> well, yes. Well, I mean, if it starts at 2 p.m., I need to be off both days. Right. <laughs> need some recovery time, nephew. Because, yeah, these fights, they go by, man, you can see the pain on their face. They're like, oh. Fight every over. shot seen every shot means a lot like you see a guy land a body shot that one fight um i can't remember it, w- the names i mean obviously we just started but there was one fight i think it was a 165 pound matchup 155 pound um in the first round the opening sequence guy gets dropped a shot to the uh, a shot to the head like a right hand he drops him it's back up, drops him again with another shot to the head. Oh, the comeback? Then, you talking about that one? No, not that one. Oh. That one was good, too. But then he gets back up again and gets dropped with two body shots. And I was like, yo, like every single shot was, you could see it on his face. It was like every shot he got hit with was like a fight ender. Except he survived, got back up, survived the 10 count, and then got knocked back down again. So it was, it was, it was they, were, they were entertaining, but that fight you just mentioned where dude came off the canvas like two or three times to get the win, to get the knockout win. Yeah. Oh, that, he showed a lot of heart. Let's see if I can figure out which guy that was. I know. We got to get, we got to be able to watch, the, we got to see them, um, i be able to keep track of these names if we're going to talk about them because we're just like talking about fighter X and fighter Y right now. Well, we we can start expanding into all that. I, I, listen, I think I mean we're covering we're covering fight sports, so um, boxing yeah. boxing has so many fights in between. I mean, the only one that the only fight that looks anything right now is this Tank Davis versus Ryan Garcia. Yeah, that's yeah. the only thing that looks um that looks that's that's juicy. Nobody wants to fight Bud Crawford right now, so and he's like the like probably one of the best American champions since Floyd. A much much more um, brutal style. He's much more entertaining to watch, but he can't get a matchup. I thought they were trying to line him up with Spence. No, I mean they, that's the fight to make. It's been the fight to make for the last three years. Oh man, it's, but that's how boxing. That's how it's gonna be. You know how boxing is, man. We didn't get we didn't get Manny Pacquiao versus Floyd until like it, when it should have happened. It, it, we didn't get it for another like four or five years. It's mostly like pro- the promoters. It's not the fighters. It's mostly like the promoters. Like until like ten years for that one. Right, you know what I mean. Like it's mostly the promoters telling the other promoters to fuck off. Yeah, or they can't come to terms with these major deals that they have to do. Like it's, the promoters. It. I don't, it's the promoters They're like they want to get the most they, they they won't give ground to each other they, they're equally powerful imagine it like mm. basically it's like mcdonald's and burger king fighting over a corner lot like they, they, they try to I mean, talk they about usually it. do they usually right across the street from each other They're like hey right but that's what i'm saying like they're not gonna like if they one of them like look i want the one with the turning lane like no i want the one with the turning lane and they, they're not gonna like give ground to each other you know what i mean like that's all. That's all you see is like the negotiation between. They basically argue over every little aspect until finally they get a chance to like iron out the details. But it's, it's lawyers and it's like a bunch of small print that has nothing to do with the actual fighters, because the fighters themselves. I mean, they're 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 willing to get in there. Obviously, I mean that's what they do for a living. But it's the promotions usually like they don't. And some promotions don't really mix well with each other. That's what we had. With, that's what we really had with Pacquiao and um, Floyd. I think. I think it's, it, who represents Floyd? I mean, who represents um, Pacquiao? Was it Aram? Bob Aram? I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember. I can't. Remember. I'm not sure. But anyways, who, I didn't. Whoever, whoever was the, whoever it was, like they don't. I mean, they just they don't work well together because like one side's gonna be like okay i want this 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 and they were like fuck you fuck you fuck you you know what i mean and they won't they won't like they don't negotiate well 
So it takes a while before they can get everything ironed out and they make some compromises. A lot of ego, a lot like huge egos involved. So that's why you don't get the matchups you want to see in boxing when you want to see them. Hmm. Rarely is it on the fighter. Yeah, their weight classes are very different. Very different. And there's like a billion of them. What are they? I'm like, looking at uh, BKFCs. Right. Oh, BK. Aren't they more like boxing's weight classes, though? It's, I thought. It's closer. No. It, 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 but it's not, though. I mean, it's, it's. I guess it's closer, but it's not the same. Yeah, it's not like increments or four. But their middle weight is uh, 175. And their welter weight is 165. I don't hate it. They got featherweight at 146. Light heavyweight's like 180s. Not bad. Oh, Paige Van Zandt's also fighting on this uh, London card for the BKFC. I thought they were going to cut her. She's 0-2. Because, oh no, I think I think after her last fight... The promoter was like, I mean, if she wants to fight again, I guess we'll give her one more. But they don't seem very enthusiastic about her her career, period. It's a good thing that she's making a lot of money on social media. and She's wrestling, too. Plat- hmm? Is she in the AEW, I believe. Oh, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I don't know if it was a one-off or what, but I know she's on there. <clears throat> Do you, you see the roster? BKFC? <laughs> no, I'm just looking at the uh, the events. So, um, cruiserweight is like 190, I guess it's 195. Oh, my God. Again, Lombard? The champ. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Hey, but wait, it gets it gets better. It gets better. Oh, let me I guess, I here. guess, I guess cruiserweight starts at, um, I think cruiserweight starts at, let me see, I'm going to put this over here. It's a big screen. So cruiserweight, I guess it starts at um, one ninety nine, maybe. Guess who's in that uh, division and undefeated? Who? You remember a UFC fighter by the name by the name of Houston Alexander? What? Hold on. What? Where? Wow, that's a throwback. Where, what, what was Houston that? Alexander, bro, he's legit. Fifty years old. What weight class? He's fighting at 199, which is, I think, cruiserweight. It's not, it's like right below, right above light heavyweight. Because light heavyweight, I think, is 185. This one, in this division. I feel like they should have just made that an even 200, but. I think anything over one, because all the heavyweights, like, it varies from, like, heavyweight starts at, like, 206. The same as like you know like any other um, promotion. I will tell you one thing: the, the these pitchers, they look more menacing than uh, the UFC's pitchers. You get what I'm saying? Sure. These guys look. I'm like, trying to beautify them. It's like mug shots almost, man. Like oh. Right. Whoa. Uh, no, I I agree. These pitchers do look more like they look like gladiators, bro. We see that the, these pitchers are like oh shit like. Hey, was Johnny Bedford in the UFC? Who? Johnny Bedford. Does that name ring a bell? Not really for me. I don't know. He looks very familiar. God, Houston Alexander. A homie is 50 years old, bro. Still <laughs> it just says 50. No oh. joke, 50. He's 2-0. Man. One knockout. That's something else, man. 50. I mean, that's one thing that he had in spades. Houston Alexander can crack. I mean, yeah, he used to be a big... Yeah, so I believe that. It's weird. Well, he was... The... I didn't think he was fighting at all anymore. He was the first guy uh, in the UFC that was like a... Probably the first guy, but... He was like a, a power lifter. That was also a fighter. I mean, mm-hmm. you see guys that are, um, you know, jacked or guys that lift, but not power lifters. 
he did have a, a small gas tank. I, mean, I guess you don't need it when you can get rid of him quickly. Hey, the, yeah. uh, the dude, uh, Johnny Bedford, he was from the UFC. Yeah, well, was he? He was on the Ultimate Fighter. Well, he's been on all, all the promotions, Bellator, UFC. Okay. He made his round. I mean, like, they have Alves, too. Couple former MMA fighters. And you know what I see? I noticed though too in this um in you in um sorry in uh, BKFC. I'm noticing in BKFC is a lot of guys um their weight fluid. They switch between one or two weight classes because if you look at the the welterweight champion, lightweight champion, and the welterweight champion is the same guy. It was Palomino? Mm-hmm. Undefeated, and he's both the lightweight and the welterweight champion. And then Lorenzo Hunt, who's the light heavyweight champion, also competes at cruiserweight. But like they kind of go between that those weight get gaps. Same as in um, and that's what you see from boxing too. Like you see guys move up um a few spots, and you see it in you see it in um MMA, but it's not as prevalent. Between like you know, I mean, you might see guys go for champ champ, but you don't see like just regular contenders um, going from weight class to weight class. They kind of usually stick to one or the other. I think that's a lot. A lot of that has to do with the big uh, weight class differences, though, because that's a little harder to swing than when it's only like four or five pounds of a difference, right? In some of these classes. Right, and then I mean, that's why boxing does it all the time. Is like when you're only swinging between three pounds, it's not that big of a deal. Facts, not as big of a deal. The, the, the jumps in, in in the May are huge. Oh yeah, from from eighty five to two hundred five, that's two different kinds of that's two different guys. Yeah, yo, John Dodson's fighting over here too. Yeah, John Dodson, Marcus Brimage. What the? You heck? remember Marcus Brimage? Oh, the mm-hmm. scouter. Scouter, yeah. yeah. Boy had the Ginyu, the Ginyu force. He came out with the Ginyu suit, whatever. Hey, uh, you guys ready to call it? Yeah, man. Yeah. Good to um, be back. Good to be back, man. Um, fight sports, fight sport for the fans, by the fans, baby. We cover all things fight sports. Um, really, I want to look to see some more BKFC because I think. This might be this. This might they might carve out a nice little lane for themselves, and become something special. Yeah, at first, I thought I like it was it. something that wasn't going to be like around for long. But after watching it, that's entertainment. Hey, right. and before we before we close, I was I was always curious about this because like if you if you talk listen to the average MMA fan, whether it be online, like Twitter or at a bar in real life. Average MMA fan they don't really care for the grappling too much on average, especially when there's like when there's lulls in the action. Then boxing and Muay Thai, which is they don't have much of that at all, isn't more popular in this in the United States. It's so, all about promotion. I, I, mean, I think promotion has a, a big, uh, has a large, like, is a large influence on that. I think it's more, they just want pure nonstop action. And even in kickboxing and Muay Thai, there's a lot of stalls and a lot of uh, stalls in action. If you watch the average kickboxing fight or the average Muay Thai fight, even though it's all stand up, they still have, though, know, it's not crazy fast paced the way most MMA fights tend to be but this kind of like bridges that gap where it's just constant in your face and like we in the era of very low attention spans bro so you got to be able to get it in there quickly <laughs> i think yeah. bkfc does that for us this brings the violence that they want because the type of fan that you're talking about is the guy that just wants knockouts and blood and <laughs> if, if anything just bleed. Yeah, was gonna bring the blood. Yeah, just bleed. <laughs> yeah. 
But um, <laughs> on that note, though, uh, like and subscribe. Holla at your boys. Um, actually, Knuckles MMA on Twitter, and we're on YouTube for this for this podcast. So you know, give us a shout out. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you in the comments. Let us know what you um, what you think. And let us know what you want to see, hear us talk about. On that note, zip it up though. Zip it out. Zippity doo dah. Bye bye. <laughs>